<laughs> Marshall. Well, today I am joined by uh, writer director Marshall Cook, as well as a star of the film um, Matthew Cook. Matt Cook, uh, no relation, uh, other than uh, this great film called Film Fest. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Thanks for, for having, having us. us. Uh, Marshall, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, why you decided to make this film? I know a lot of these films are so personal to to uh, writers, directors, and in this case, just jabs right at that industry that we we love to hate and hate mm -hmm. to love. Yeah, and um, sure. It, and it's not, you know, about hating it. Um, for me, I think it's all of the feels, you know, that I have for <laughs> myself and and uh, my friends and our, you know, pursuits. So I just think it's a very um, fair look at it, you know, for better or worse. Um, you know, some people, some people might think some things are unfair, but I, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. A, a lot of times films are films and the film industry is portrayed as just this, you know, uh, glamour, glamorized red carpet when, you know, people are always taking your pictures, but uh, there's a lot more work in it, and I'm telling you, being being on this side of the microphone, I, I've gained so much appreciation for it in the last couple. Yeah, of years. and and I think another um, reason I made it was just like people ask, you know, what this business is like, and I just don't really see it represented in the way that we did it in Film Fest in most movies. So mm -hmm. uh, mostly, I made this so hopefully people could watch it and understand, and then I wouldn't have to explain it over Thanksgiving dinner over what we're doing on here. <laughs> <laughs> Hold your questions. We're going to have a film at the end of this. It's going to answer everything you need to know. <laughs> um, um, Matt, tell us a little bit about your character. Uh, I play a guy named Logan, who is a filmmaker who has created uh, and shot and edited this film. And he's really proud of it. And he thinks it's going to be his big break. Uh, and he really wants it to be his big break. And uh, the film industry has other plans for him and this movie. Uh, so he and his uh, business partner, they submit to all these festivals and they only get into one. And it's one that he's never heard of. And uh, it's one that he begrudgingly goes to. And that's where the movie kicks into high gear uh, <laughs> with all the characters. I like to call it Monsters on Parade. Uh, it, it, it's just like all these big characters that are all based on real people that, you know, real types of people, not anyone in particular, but it's, uh, it's really fun. So this guy has all these, Logan has all these expectations and then he's uh, met with reality pretty forcefully. Is, is there something wrong with that, Marshall, feeling like your movie is, is the best thing here uh, at a film festival or even while you're, while you're creating it or, is it is it better to kind of temper your expectations? Well, of course, it's, it's better to always temper your expectations, but I'm living it, Emmanuel. I'm Film Fest is fantastic. Why why doesn't everyone in Hollywood care about it right now? Yeah, uh, I, I love Film Fest. Uh, I, I gotta be honest. I see myself in a couple of those little characters. I know that uh, specifically, Kyle. I've I've been that guy two. I was that guy two years ago at Comic Con. Um, chasing people down with flyers to to go see a to go see a film uh, that that we were real passionate about. Uh, actually, it was a series. It was for Dark Web from Felt Films, and we were, we were doing it over at the Hard Rock. And it was get these flyers out, get these people here, and then fill these seats. So I, I have been Kyle, and then obviously I've been the I've been the hopefully not the cringy uh, reporter <laughs> like uh, like Matt, like your character dealt with. Um, but I have seen those types where where they're looking for that that extra moment or that um, that one line that's going that's going to make their interview stand out from the rest. When all you guys really want to do is talk about the actual film yeah. or or property. Um, can you talk about developing these big characters? Is it people you've seen, uh, or just just what you see in in that type of uh, job or role, but just turn it up a thousand yeah i think you know all, all these characters in film fest exist um and and they were all based on reality you know so you take that kind of foundation and they're 
a little bit of a Frankenstein of what we've seen, experienced, and then we add the element of the you know the actors that we cast, and and then we cast about seven people from uh, the Groundlings uh, Theater in, in Hollywood, and, and you know these are just uh, actors who they're true performers, writers, uh, and directors and performers, and they do it every week for free, you know, uh, and and they do it because they obviously love it. And so they're definitely in the spirit of what this movie was. And, um, so given that, you know, we were shooting an indie film, we needed great characters. We didn't have a whole lot of time. We wanted, you know, good chemistry. I thought that was a, a you know, a gold mine uh, for casting. So um, the reporter you're talking about, Patty Guggenheim, you know, you, you give them and it is, you know, here's, here are, here's my ideas. And then they take that and elevate it. And, you know, all of a sudden, Paul and I are geniuses for, you know, all of her, her additions. Um, but I think, you know, one of the, the best things that I did was just cast the right people. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, I, I felt that really, uh, Matt, you had a, you had a really good chemistry with, uh, with Diona and, and your producer and, and going back and forth. Uh, what was that relationship like on screen? And, and afterwards, a uh, follow-up question from Marshall. Uh, Deanna and I knew each other from working on a show called Clipped uh, that we did years ago. And uh, we became friends on that and stayed friends. And then when she came on board with Film Fest, it was just so easy to step into that, that relationship and that friendship uh, because we had it in real life prior. And she is so good at what she does uh, that she made everything better. She made my job easier, the movie. I think she's the heart of the movie. She's like the one you, you can really, you, you really can support and root for and uh, hope she survives, you know? Uh, and she's, she's just the best. So it was, a, it was a great time working with her. It always is. Th thank you for that answer because it actually leads me right to my next question over uh, her character, Alex, seemed to really be the glue into trying, you know, keeping, uh, keeping Logan in check and keeping, uh, keeping the wheels turning. Uh, I want to ask you, Marshall, what, what is a producer to a film? Um, well, there's so many different kinds of producers, but the best kind of producer uh, is, is the, you know, the, the one that makes it happen. I mean, they're, they're the logistics. I mean, she says, you know, he, uh, He's the show. I'm the business. You know that that's what, when she introduces herself and, and Matt. And you know, there you you equally need a great producer to get anything done, um, because for all the things that are in you know the director's head, the writers and director's head to you know the producer needs needs to make sure that those things get there. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, one doesn't happen without the other. So they really are codependent. Okay, great. Um, as as far as shooting this film, where where did you guys shoot it? How long did it take? What was that? What was that experience? Um, we shot it in LA, uh, like half in LA, and then um, the festival uh, took place in Idlewild, California, which is uh, a couple of, uh, hours east in the forest reserves. And uh, it's a lovely, the the quaintest, cutest, loudest town <laughs> to ever film in. It was just quiet, like. When you visit it, it's like, oh my god, it's so beautiful. And we, can't, you know, and then but when we got there, I, it, I don't know if, it, if it, I think it was us because when we came back to LA too, we were we had like five helicopters circling around us, but they were just inventing ways to make noise between chainsaws and trucks and dogs, <laughs> and, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff going on. <laughs> uh, but everybody there was great. Uh, you know, I think it was a character in itself, and and really, you know, um, just visually, just brings another you know layer to the movie. Any any reflection on on kind of your career so far while you're filming this and, and moments in your life that kind of popped up and like man I remember going through something like that. Uh, yeah, I mean a lot of it's in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean I think a lot of this took place after my first movie, and um, so uh, you know the the um, the sides of Logan we don't love might have been more my twenties. And then the wiser, the wiser stuff for me and for my thirties. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was the experience like premiering Film Fest at Austin Film Festival? Uh, well, how was it? How was it received? Uh, I, 
from what we heard, it was very well received, but it was virtual. So, uh, okay. mm -hmm. you know, we would have loved to have gone there. I, I, I dreamed of, you know, premiering at Austin and South by Southwest and some of those, you know, bigger festivals. Um, but uh, yeah, so it was, it was a little double edged. It was just like, or, or bittersweet, you know, like, yes, we got it, but you know, I'm going to put it on a projector in my backyard and get a, you know, some private messages about how it went. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, Matt, for, for Logan, do you think he just wants validation or do you really think that he wants a big blockbuster hit? Uh, I think it's, yeah, I think it's all external want. It's all, you know, he wants that outside validation and he wants that big hit and he wants to be the new it guy for the, for the time. And uh, I think that is his, his big weakness in the film is that need for outside validation. Uh, and I think that's the journey he goes on is because of that. Oh, okay. Um, I, I, Cause I, I asked because there, there's some points where, where he's, he's struggling so hard. He doesn't, he doesn't feel like he fits in with, with this small crowd, this small community. And I'm wondering, it's like, is he doing it for the love of the, of, of filmmaking or, or does he just, he wants to be Mr. Hollywood going, going, going forward. And I found that real interesting in the character that I, I wasn't necessarily able to read in a hundred percent and yeah. figure it out. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of an intentional thing of like, you know, he's been left to his own devices for a little too long and he's gotten wrapped up in this desire and this need for approval from the industry. And uh, that's probably not the healthiest thing to be searching for. And that's what he has to come to terms with over the, the course of the movie. Yeah, because I, I love that. Go ahead. And if I can add to that, yeah, I think, you know, the, the place that Logan is in in this movie is not a great place for a guy like Logan. Like, Logan needs to be making things. You know, that's that's where, that's mm -hmm. his purpose. And and when your film is done, you're not, a, you're not a filmmaker. Now you're a film marketer. You know, you're, it's existing for all the reasons that, you know, you shouldn't be making movies. It's, it's like, uh, accolades and you know for fame or recognition or money you know like he needs to just make another movie or, or short films or something um, him not me <laughs> yeah. how, how challenging is that part of the industry Marshall from from taking your film you're done with it yeah to to uh, to premiere um, you know it depends I mean the longer it goes uh, it could it could be tough. I mean, I think the, there are long periods of time where I haven't watched the movie and no one's watching it. It's sitting there and it's waiting to come out. And then, you, you know, it's just like a weird idle hands thing. And if I'm not busy with something else, then I'm like forgetting how much I like the movie. And then, you know, it came, it, it's on Amazon and then you watch it again. And it's like, oh, I, I like this movie. You get re refreshed, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you get some kind of response and, and you're kind of living in this, you know, roller coaster where you really should just focus on what's next. Like this movie's done, it doesn't belong to me anymore. It's now for the audience. You can watch it on most platforms for free now. And, uh, and yeah, I, I just need to move on <laughs> uh, emotionally. Uh, okay. and hopefully you guys enjoy it, yeah. So, so that, that probably explains why, why uh, directors, writers, filmmakers in general have multiple projects going on at once, but I don't get stuck right and in, in that probably sure but you also i mean just this business it's it's just survivor man you know you have to like you know i need water well i'm gonna bury these things i'm gonna pee in this bag and bury that and i'm gonna like you, you know you're doing fuck he did that don't look at me like you know, I saw okay. that um, I'm not making this up. I'm pulling it from an episode. No, I just feel like there's other survival techniques you can draw on other than I'm gonna <laughs> pee in a bag and bury it. Yeah, I think you get the condensation or something. Whatever, <laughs> spinning plates. You're spinning plates, you know, uh, because you never know what's going to uh, um, land first. Like, for, for example, my third film um, that I should be doing in October, uh, I wrote before Film Fest. So you just never know, you know, when whatever project's going to get an opportunity. All right. Irons in the fire. There you go. Got it. All right. That's, that's a very good analogy. I like it. Good, good example. Uh, there's, there's a moment in the film that I, <laughs> that hit me in the face. Uh, and I'm going to tell you guys this, 
I, I've been do I've been doing interviews now for for about two three years, and I I love doing it. I love being on this side of 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 the market. And there's a moment when Logan, I'm not necessarily going to spoil what part of the film, but you guys you guys will know what I'm talking about. He does he doesn't want to do another film, and mm-hmm. and he's sitting there, and uh, CJ out of all people, sorry not CJ, oh yeah his, his uh, Kyle out of all people, tells him, well if you don't want to make another movie. You know, just go make these, and he hands him and he hands him an uh, an award, and just, and um, a reason why that hits so hard is because I actually am a production manager for a uh, a sign company that does awards and uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> trophies. So uh, and at the same time trying to uh, trying to progress in in this industry, and I was like, ow. <laughs> Maybe this is a, maybe this is the calling that I have to to maybe uh, move on and find find something a little bit closer to what I what I'm passionate about. <laughs> so I uh, I really appreciated that moment. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to share that with you guys. That's amazing. I mean, yeah, that's the whole that's the whole thing of the the whole movie kind of hangs on that idea of like, what are you actually after? What is it you want to do? And and that's. Uh, yeah, CJ's character in that moment has a really great, a really great point. It's uh, this, a- this movie has a a rare talent of taking a lot of very, um, a lot of characters who are not self aware, mm-hmm. and it takes watching these unaware people to become self aware as an audience. Like I, I found that people relate to different characters, and they're like, oh, ouch! Like I'm attacking them. You know? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, just in case, if I if I ever actually do make it and and make a little bit better of myself in in the in the, in the interview game, for the lack of a better term, Film Fest is gonna be is gonna be the one movie I would continuously refer to back as. Yeah, that was a slap in the face. I needed to to uh, <laughs> to well, that's probably good. jump. <laughs> that's amazing. And we're, we're, that's what we're after. We're after a connection and reaction, and you know. We're trying to reach that audience. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's another aspect of it that I liked is you got so many different types of characters that do so many different things that that it's always that it's easy to gravitate to one of them to something that they're going through. Mm. Um, the the one I also liked was uh, uh, Thomas or Tomas or however he wants to pronounce it, his name at the moment and Max versus mm-hmm. you know the old school of doing things versus the new school and realizing that you have more in common than you have. Uh, differences Mm -hmm. Uh, that that was that was really cool i like that uh you want to talk about them a little bit yeah um yeah so uh tom or tomas uh played by laird mcintosh uh is having a bit of an identity crisis and uh um he's asking everybody to treat him like he's like totally hardcore swedish even though he's just a guy who's like 50 (laughs) and um and he, he's convinced that'll help him work more. And, and, and he becomes obsessed w- that he's in competition with a uh, 15 year old, uh, you know, kid who shot a movie on an iPhone six. So you have like the old guard, you know, cinematographer with his, you know, shooting, you know, in true 4K with master prime lenses versus like, you know, a consumer, you know, inferior phone. And, um, and yeah, it's just the ultimate old school versus new school. But uh, um that's just a, a really fun storyline that a lot of people have, have really gravitated to. And, and, and uh, just a, such an odd couple. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, it was done very well. Um, I want to thank you both Marshall, Matt for, for your time today and for your film. Like I said, it, it may be the turning point for me. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I will, I will always cherish this film for, for a very, very personal reason, as I shared with you, with both of you gentlemen. Uh, July 23rd on um, platforms everywhere, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Yep. Yeah, just yeah. ask your phone or your TV. They'll tell you. Yeah, they, they tell me to do everything else, so yeah, why not? Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I hope you two have a wonderful day, and uh, we hope to see you on the next one. Congratulations on a fabulous film. All Thanks right. so much. Thank you so much. All right.